like my Dutch, then start to drift. <laughs> Welcome back to another video, and today guys, we are going to be starting something new. It is a new series where I'm going to give you tips and tricks throughout the paint editor on Forza Horizon 3 that I have learned um, over my experience using it. Keep in mind, I'm not the best person out there, so there may be other tips and tricks and easier way to do things that I don't know of. But anyway guys, if you enjoy this, then like it and I'll keep it going. Uh, but anyway. First, I'm going to cover why this car. Well, this car I had planned to use um, because I was already partway through the design, as you can tell from what's on the hood. And then I said, you know what, it's a, it's a good time to start the series now that I have something in my mind on what I want to do. First thing that you guys want to do when you start designing, or at least first thing that I do, is I build the car the way I want, you know, engine, rims, bumpers, everything like that. And then choose a color. What color do you want to use? That's what you first thing you want to do. Next thing is get an idea on kind of what you want to do. Do you want to build a drift looking car, a drag looking car, like a rundown beater? That's what you kind of want to figure out is what you want to exactly do. Before I get into the features, I do want to say that this video, as titled, is going to be, like, the beginner's base, like, what the simple stuff is. As soon as possible, I will get into more work, like, probably finishing up the roof or redesigning the 13 logo on the side. So first feature is the advanced camera. This feature is used either through the right or left thumbstick by pushing on it. The reason why I'm saying either the right or the left all depends on not only your remote layout, but also um, it's just kind of a habit that I actually don't remember which thumb. But anyway, you do use one of them while you're holding it. You use the same one you're holding it with to either move the camera left and right, up and down on the car, and then you use the other one to actually zoom in and out by pushing up and down. Next is the move feature. This basically means after you get a design, which you have to click add new layer, to open up and pick a new design. There are multiple tabs, uh, but I'm just gonna pick a square as you see, uh, and then use a simple color that you guys can see. And the move feature allows you to move it anywhere you want on the car that is on where you're labeled as, whether it be the left, right side, roof, or front or rear bumper, um, but you cannot be like just move it all the way around the car at one shot. You have to actually stay on the side you're on. Now with this one, there is a issue, which is why it is a perfect example of here. You'll see on the right side that when I go to move a layer, there are wheel wells that the top of the wheel wells actually count as a roof piece, not a side piece. So not only do you need the design. The side but then when you're on the roof you need to blend that part there from the side on to the top and like keep it going nicely and then there is the size feature which allows you to make the shape bigger or smaller keep in mind the way that you rotate it will also depend on which direction you go into with size like how it's actually gonna size it a uh, spinning it which allows you to spin it as you please you can make it go from a square that's level across the car so you can angle it so that it goes from say the top right corner to the rear like the bottom left next is the screw which allows you to basically take the, the shape and the middle of the shape will stay exactly where it is but the right and left edge will shift either the top of it will shift to the left or the top of it will shift to the right and then the bottom will go in the opposite direction of the top. There is then the transparency, which allows you to make the shape see-through um, as you choose. You can either make it partially see-through, where you can see a little bit of what's underneath, or you can make it, for the most part, see-through, where you can see a lot of what's underneath, but then there is like that little haze over it. And then extra stuff is grouping. If you go over a layer and you hit uh, the right trigger, whatever layers you press the right trigger on 
When you then press A on one of them and hit group, it'll take all of the layers that you hit and it'll put them into not one layer, but it'll put them into one layer block space. So you can move all of the layers at one time. There's also then, when you're painting something, um, you can get a previous color that you use. So if you use something on your roof and you went on the side, you, you know, go into where it says color, hit RB, go to previous colors, pick the color. If it is a previous color that you want that you don't remember, then you can go back to where you had the previous color. You can click on the block, click change color, and the first color option it'll give you to change it to is the same color it already is. If you press A and just make it the same color, then when you go back to the shape that you want that color, press A on there, you can change it to the previous color of what you want it because then that other color that you used the day before, for example, will now be in your previous color selection. Another thing is custom colors. If you go in, you can see me quickly flipping through. The first bar allows you to pick the color. Second bar allows you to pick, um, like, adjust the shade between the color and white, like putting white in with the color to make it either lighter, like more of the color or less of the color, like a lighter. And then there is the third bar, which allows you to make then that color either darker or lighter of that color. So that's pretty much it, guys. As I said, if you enjoyed this and you want me to make another one like this to let me know or leave a comment on what you would like different or how you'd want it different. Um, but yeah, this car is going to be, there's going to be a lot of things. I'm going to show you not only how to trace over something in the game if there's a car that you happen to be able to do that with but then also there's going to be a lot of stuff on this car that is going to be freehand so you will see that also um but that's it guys um hope that you enjoyed and i'll see you guys in the next video goodbye